felt the importance of getting this out. I've seen the question all over the internet and in many, many different places about, in reference to Chris Watts and his mentality, his, uh, in reference to the Watts case and Chris Watts, was he aware? Was he slow? Was he in his body? Was he not aware? Was he stupid? You know, they say things like this and people are really trying, I get it. I get it. I've talked about this in many videos. People are really trying to wrap their mind. It, it, I don't blame you. You know, most of us human beings would really have to stretch our mind to understand what on earth would get into somebody, you know. And there are so many different people out there with different versions and different opinions. And, you know, most of us have studied the case and we didn't really know these people personally, but we feel like we do because we've studied so much of their life as much as we can. And some of us have experience with personality types like that. We grew up around personality disordered individuals, people with mental illness, people struggling from all kinds of different types of trauma. And that's going to give you an even deeper insight. And personally, I have lived through a lot of that. I grew up like that around a lot of people like that and having gotten into relationships. The covert narcissistic personality, though, will be the most confusing of them all. And it is the type of narcissism that people are most not familiar with, most uneducated and uninformed um, on. Okay, that is why this particular type of narcissist is so dangerous, can be so dangerous and so tricky. And so devastating to the lives of people around them, okay? Because it's just not what people think of as narcissists. Now, I'm not going to get all into what the covert narcissistic personality type is like because there's too much information out there about it already. And here's my deal. You could study all day long. You could go to a professional all day long, all you wanted to. Um, you know, but someone said the other day, and they were right. I was watching uh, Damien Eccles live, and he quoted someone. I can't remember who it was. And he said, really, the only way we ever only get knowledge and wisdom is only through experience. And it really, it really hit home for me because people can point us in the right direction all they want, even a professional, even an expert. But when it comes down to the real knowledge and wisdom of something, it comes in experience. It comes from having lived day in and day out watching this and observing it in all of its different moods and shades and and reactions and and different times of day and in different settings around different people that gives people a much deeper insight into these types of personalities and i wouldn't wish it on anybody i wouldn't wish that type of experience on anybody you know but it is what it is and so like I say, you can, you can read it in a book all you want. You can look up covert narcissists and read down through the symptoms and the signs and what they act like. And you can cover case histories and you can really delve off into it. And you can talk to people, you know, who have been through it or whatnot. But until you, or ask a professional even, but until you, you literally have been confronted with it and backed into a corner and gotten into a relationship suddenly with a person like that, or you're best friends with somebody like that, or you got to be at work with somebody like that every day. But generally, the romantic partner, the wife or husband, it's, that's the one that's going to know the most, okay? But until you have had to be close to a personality type like that firsthand, it's, it's very hard to understand the covert narcissist. Because they are always wearing a mask. They are very, very attached to their image and to always making sure they look like the good guy or the good girl. And they have so many different twisted issues. Okay. They have a lot of, of, and it's so complex and so complicated that I try to get it out as much as I can on my channel in doses and segments. Because if not, you know, I'd be here for years trying to really convey what it was like living with a personality type like that, what I learned from it and saw and observed. And, but here's the thing, as far as I want to answer from my personal experience and my feelings on it. Okay. I'm not a professional. Do your due diligence, do your research, look up covert narcissism, reach out to professionals, do your work. Okay. I always encourage that. But from my personal experience and from what I know, 
for years and years of experience with this particular personality type, okay? Yes, I feel like Chris Watts, yes, he knew what he was doing, okay? He, he planned this. He carried out those actions. Now, there are people that come from every end of the spectrum. Oh, he was possessed. When someone has that high level of psychopathy and they have been that open and um, easily to man, easy to manipulate and and having that weak covert narcissist, I've only dealt with the male covert narcissist. Okay, both my parents, my mother has high pathological narcissism, and see, it's not just a male or female thing. But before I even discuss narcissism with a person, I would need to reiterate that please make sure you have the knowledge that not all narcissism is bad. We're born with narcissism. Narcissism equals survival. Narcissism equals self-preservation. And all humans need a certain amount of it to survive. We need to be motivated. We need to feel like we're good enough or we wouldn't even get out of bed. We wouldn't go to work. We wouldn't even try to compete or run the race or fix our hair or brush our teeth. We wouldn't do anything. And we also wouldn't be able to protect ourselves from burglars, robbers, people just wanting to walk right over us and take what we have and, and tell us what we're going to do with our day. You know what I'm saying? So a certain amount of narcissism is healthy. So in understanding so that we don't miss things and have blind spots and red flags and so that we can get a larger awareness out there and begin to really understand things, we need to understand it from the ground up. That's what it takes. Okay? So it is important um, that we understand the healthier parts of narcissism and the differences so that when we do see someone who, who is way up the spectrum, narcissism falls on a spectrum of healthy, healthier, and then going rogue over into the more pathological side of narcissism. Okay. Where they have all these toxic, horrible defense mechanisms and it just gets worse and worse and worse. You know, it's not one set thing or one size fits all, but it's important that we understand this first, these basics. See, that's how I started when I started studying it and along with observing it at home. Um, and so for the covert narcissist, though, it's a very different thing than what people are used to seeing, than what they even, any idea of what they thought a narcissist was. But yes, it's when narcissism goes rogue, when it goes beyond just feeling good about yourself and good confidence and I can do this, I, you know, I'm a good person and I can, you know, uh, achieve my goals and I can protect myself. No, you may not call me at 2 a.m. and, you know, those kind of things. When it starts to go beyond and healthy narcissists have help. They don't call it that. They just call, call it emotionally well-regulated people. But people within the range of healthy narcissism also have a healthy amount of empathy. And empathy is also on a spectrum. Some of us have a little bit. Some of us have a little bit more. Some of, have, some of us have more towards certain things and less towards certain things. And some have a little bit less. Um, it just depends, and some have way too much empathy, where even empathy, yes, believe it or not, can go rogue and become toxic and send your life down the toilet into hell by letting people use you, abuse you, run over you. You're a people pleaser, a uh, gotta save everybody. You've lost all your, you, you've lost every last penny. You can't say no. You can't stand up for yourself. Even empathy can go over to a toxic end of the spectrum. So you get what I'm saying. So I wanted to just reiterate that. I like to do that. And I like I like other people who teach that way in their videos. They cover new ground, but they always repeat, reinforce, and reiterate old material. And they keep putting it out there. And that was always helpful to me because that is how we learn and retain information to keep repeating it, to keep reinforcing it in our brain, the old concepts, okay? Um, so for those that didn't realize that, no, I am not a professional, but I do know these things. Go and double check me if you like, do your research, but we must understand the basics of narcissism if we're going to understand the higher stuff and the red flags and the crazier stuff, then we must understand the healthier stuff. What is actually healthy? Get a real good idea of it, you know, how it's on a spectrum, how it's self-preservation, what is healthy and what's not, all right? It's when it starts starts going over into pathological narcissism where people start lacking 
empathy when they should have some and they start getting really overboard with their selfishness okay there's a lot of things that people deem narcissistic toxic narcissistic and it's just really not it's just really good confidence and high motivation um but it's yes it's when it starts going over to, to the pathological end and people start getting all of these toxic coping skills and terrible defense mechanism and lying and manipulating and cheating and controlling and just such swervy pathological ways about themselves that that is when we're going to see red flags and that is when we're going to want to worry and even the pathological narcissists they're not all the same they're not all horrible i have a lot of best friends with really high narcissism pathological my mom has pretty high pathological narcissism sometimes you know it's hard for her to accept accountability she doesn't like to be confronted about things she doesn't like to get too vulnerable and she will gaslight you she will duck and dodge she will use pow 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 those narcissistic defense tactics um people like that also get narcissistic injury and narcissistic rage we normal well-balanced healthy emotionally well-regulated people don't get narcissistic injury okay and at some point i'd like to explain to you what that is but to chris watts let's get back to that but i needed to, i needed to kind of put down the foundations for you guys okay so here we are and in chris watts the narcissism has gone rogue it has gone pathological to a pathological level and he doesn't have a more grandiose type of narc like we would see in oj simpson perhaps let's that's an ex, a good example of a more grandiose narc even though he too often hid behind an image and kept some of his narcissism hidden and his his personality hidden um but but yes okay oj simpson is more of a grandiose classic narcissist whereas chris watts is a different type okay and i'm trying to think of a type in history that would equate that you could reference to get what i'm saying but the covert narcs again it's really hard to get them across because historically we don't we don't have as much knowledge and information about that type, okay? But here it is. Chris Watts has gone into pathological levels of narcissism. And I personally feel like he had been there a long time before he ever met his wife. Before it was not her. It was not, mm, mm These are things he was carrying with him. And I personally feel like some psychopathy as well on some level. Now, I'm not a professional, but for him to go off the deep end and do what he did, there would have to be some psychopathy there for some reason, okay? But the covert narcissistic personality type is um, very inferior, feels very weak and out of control, very awkward, doesn't have any faith in their abilities whatsoever. Um, there's just a master list, just a long list of what they feel inside. And most pathological narcissists, whether they're really outgoing, grandiose, or whether they're the covert, most of them, it's driven from fear it's driven from insecurity and not feeling good enough and feeling worthless and yada 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 i've gone into this in other videos what they do but as far as chris watts here he is he's living his life with his wife and kids and the covert narcissistic type here's the deal yes they are aware of things but they do not have i've even heard you know shanann's family talk about you know they knew him personally okay but the thing is i don't think even they understood the covert personality type you know he was aware of what he was doing yes okay and fully accountable for it but the covert narcissist oftentimes this type there is an arrested development somewhere in their brain they don't have the kind of emotional intelligence they might have a high IQ. They might be well-educated, may have gone to college, might be quite skilled at certain things, might, you know, have a high level of, of intelligence. There's more than one type of intelligence, okay? And emotional intelligence is one of the most important types of intelligence that we all need to have, okay? And a covert narcissist often does not have a part of their brain due to trauma or old stuff in the childhood whether it was shame ridicule uh people not paying enough attention to them um something happening to them outside the home whatever it was plus genetics can factor in covert narcissists usually don't have the emotional intelligence or the emotional maturity 
part of their brain has not matured okay in that area of intelligence on a certain level and they don't have enough of that stuff to be self-aware to be self-aware enough to do what normal healthy people could do and self-reflect and oh well you know if i do this it's going to really impact and it's going to bring harm and and you know just really aware of how their actions are really hurting others and going to impact others oftentimes covert narcs don't have that i'm talking even when they have kids even when they have spouse it doesn't matter there's an arrested development there oftentimes and yes they are quite goofy and he <laughs> and aloof and oftentimes that's why they won't talk that's why i feel like we see chris watts often just standing around kind of and reluctant to talk kind of shy now that's different than being an introvert it's perfectly fine to be an introvert and not want to be all extroverted and stuff but people get it wrong when they think oh his wife was just so dominating and she was just uh, putting him on camera and forcing him to do things and no it's not like that at all with a covert narc half the time they beg you to be involved they insist i want to do it too they are very childlike oftentimes the covert narc even in a grown ass man body yes it's another reason they have everyone fooled or woman. This can be a man or a woman, but I have more experience with the covert narcissistic type men. So did Chris Watts, was he aware? Okay, that's what I'm trying to break down for you. The covert narcissistic type can be quite goofy, quite childlike. They can think a lot. A lot of the times they are emotionally responding to things like teenagers, sometimes 12, 13, sometimes 16, but quite often behind closed doors, they are regressed into the age of a toddler quite often in their emotional reactions and needs but they only show it to the wife they're very ashamed of this they don't feel very manly it really creates a lot of toxic shame and self-loathing and self-hatred within them and oftentimes this will be blamed on and scapegoated onto the wife they have to create a cover story they're too humiliated and ashamed to ever tell their homies or their family or anyone else that, hey, you know, I've got these issues. I don't feel very manly and I feel real awkward and insecure and I just haven't really worked on my intelligence, myself, my emotional intelligence and, and they refuse to go get the training and reach out. It doesn't even occur to them a lot of times. They've just been so used to living behind all these toxic defenses and games and plotting and secretly. I mean, it's just insane. It is, it's a whip. So people often have misconceptions about what's really occurring, but oftentimes they don't talk a lot and they're more quiet and reserved because they know if they do, they are afraid that's why a lot of the time they are afraid because they know if they do, people are going to catch on to who they really are, to what they're really like. They, they are terrified people are going to catch on to their insecurities. And oftentimes, oftentimes they are quite socially awkward. They have trouble with words. They have trouble articulating. Um, so oftentimes some of them have had learning disorders and learning disabilities growing up that, that were ignored or made fun of. Yes, I was very close to a person who that happened to. He had dyslexia. He had different learning disabilities in his childhood. And he was scoffed at, laughed at. He didn't get much help from the teachers. His father was an alcoholic. Parents um, scoffed over it. Things like this can be very, very damaging and create a lot of shame and hurt. And then as they get older, rage in the mind of a young boy or man who that happens to and i think it happens a lot so you following me here okay i think that chris watts possibly had certain types of learning disabilities um different things in the childhood going on that were overlooked um never got any treatment any therapy any guidance to help you know um correct those things or accept those things about himself and that create a lot of shame and a lot of inferiority and just all these things in him but they have to create a cover story okay and usually the wife behind closed doors is the only person that this mask comes down for that they let all that vulnerability out and even with us it's gonna take a while like we won't even know for about the first six months to a year maybe sometimes two years um they're very careful about how they let it out. They're terrified of being abandoned. Um, they have a lot of issues, okay? A lot that 
things have happened in their past or whatever that, that it was that, that developed this within them, this tendency to have narcissistic defenses and the covert type develops it in that way because they are even less confident than the grandiose narcs like OJ Simpson, even confident as OJ, that overcompensating narcissistic drive often has come from insecurities deep within and fears of not being good enough, not being fast enough, not being loved enough. That comes from that. Yes, even with confident as OJ. But within a covert narcissist like Chris Watts, okay, if you can imagine, theirs is even less. Like they have even more, way, way more insecurities and inferiorities and it just eats them alive, okay? Way worse than what's happening inside the grandiose narc. The grandiose narc can actually get up and go take what they want and they can have the backbone, the confidence to push through and they end up way overcompensating a lot of times for those fears but actually doing something great with it a lot of the time whereas the covert narcs often don't. They often do not have even that much. They feel really, um, but what they will do is sit around hating everyone else for doing it, resenting everyone else secretly and wishing they, that should be me. That's their attitude, even against their own wife, who they are supposed to be connecting to and loving and encouraging there's a lot that people don't know, okay? But I know, I know I haven't gotten directly to the point yet about Chris Watt's level of awareness, but I just felt it necessary to explain some things. <clears throat> um, there's all kinds of stuff out there, and I personally feel that uh, all of those things factored in. Yes, I do. I feel like I've explained this in other videos before. I think it was a psychological, emotional, mental, and spiritual thing that was happening to Chris Watts. I do think he was aware of himself and absolutely accountable and when he carried out what he did, okay? However, I have explained to you that within the covert narcissistic personality type, these are all the things that go on inside of them and they cannot face shame like regular, normal, healthy-minded people. They're on a very childlike level of reacting and responding and thinking a very illogical, irrational, almost sometimes psychopathic level of thinking that, you know, this is how I should solve this. They are terrified of being shamed, scoffed, laughed at, um, and, you know, just like OJ couldn't let his wife go on with her life dating other people or whatever because what for a narcissist, oh, there's no way you're going to shame me like that. Well, same with Watts. Sorry, I'm sorry, I got interrupted. My train of thought. Okay, with Watts, it was more... See, it's different types of fears of shame. Different, different reasons for different narcissists. With OJ, it was one thing. With Watts, it was that, number one, he very fragile, very covert narcissistic, very afraid of, of being scoffed and laughed at and um, self-conscious and, you know, not really in his um, comfortable zone with his ego as a man. Okay. A couple different things were going on with him towards the end of that whole situation. Um, he did not, he, number one, he knew um, he had enough sense to know, even though I've talked about him being emotionally immature and not enough emotional intelligence and all that. Oh, he knew. They know a lot of times that what he was doing was, you know, irrational. But they don't think about it in a deeper, more emotionally intelligent way that only knowing a woman for a few weeks and literally wanting to leave my pregnant wife and children behind, much less take their wives is irrational okay but they don't think like that they don't think oh you know this is immoral this is wrong um even if they're not planning to take their lives you get what i'm saying it's all about the narcissist and pleasing that ego and they have to have it at all costs and they will do it at all costs but for a man like that to process that that much complexity and shame and like how am i going to do this without the whole world looking at me like a deadbeat father. Like, you see what I'm saying? I mean, if a man really falls in love with someone else and just isn't working out with his wife, and, you know, she, even if she's pregnant, 
if he goes about it the right way and he communicates and he doesn't bring harm to anyone, okay, he has a right to leave her if he wants to, if he handles it in the right way. It's still not going to look good to the public or the family or whatever. There's still going to be a certain amount of shame he has to cope with. You get what I'm saying? But these things are very, very tricky. Okay, the woman at Live Abuse Free, she explains this beautifully. All those little twists and turns that are going on in a covert narcissistic type mind because of the lack of emotional maturity, because of the lack of emotional intelligence, because of the lack of empathy, lack of a lot of things. Um, but with his shame, it was different than I talked about with OJ. With, with the shame in Chris Watts, it was like, okay, he knew that if he proceeded with this, he knew that really his wife, a lot of times when you're in a relationship with a covert narcissist like that, you didn't do anything wrong and they know it. Like mine, he knew that I was a loving, devoted partner. It is something that is beyond them. They have an insatiable, uh, starving, uh, something you could never fill up in them, desire for more and more and more than you could ever give, than you could ever satisfy, no matter how wonderful, sexual, beautiful, fantastic, uh, great friend, no matter what, okay? And they know it. They don't reason it out like a more emotionally intelligent adult does, but they know it. They just feel like something's wrong with them, and they know it. They know there's something wrong with them. They know there's something off, and they fear this, the ridicule and the shame and, you know, they from the public, which I don't blame people. I wouldn't want to be ridiculed and shamed either. But what I'm saying is they don't have the ability. Sometimes we have to go ahead and face a certain amount of healthy shame to do the right thing, whatever that's going to be, to be true to ourselves. Sometimes, you know, he should have gone ahead and gone through the healthy shame and faced it as a man rather than taking the life of his pregnant wife and daughters. You see what I'm saying? But a covert narcissist can't. They cannot be like, okay, I know that I'm going to be viewed as a bad person, but I have fallen in love with someone else in just a few weeks, and I no longer want my pr pr pregnant wife, or I really don't even want to be around my daughters. I just want to run off with this girl. And that's very hard for them to, because they know it's irrational. They know it's shameful. But what I'm saying is, a man has the right to choose that. Yeah, it's going to hurt. It's betraying. It's awful. That's the way the covert narc is. But he should have faced that shame instead of taking their lives, okay? But within the case of OJ, and you know, I've kind of compared these things, but see, Chris Watts couldn't do that. He could not do bear, bear what was going to come down on him for trying to face this the right way. See, that was a huge component to this in trying to understand why he went ahead and did what he did to them. And see, there's so many people out there bashing Shanann and ridiculing her and she caused him to snap and it has nothing to do with their partner. See, you get what I'm saying? So I just wanted to put that in there, understanding the type of shame that what was going on with them Watts and what he was trying to avoid. Uh, whereas OJ, it was a little different. It was more like, you know, he had a lot of these inner issues too, inferiority complexes and fears and insecurities and extreme jealousy. And even though he was a big confident athlete and all that more grandiose narc. Um, but Watts, yeah, most of the time the covert types are even more terrified of shame and exposure than the grandiose types and tarnishing, you know, that nice guy image that goes way back to their childhoods. They have this desperate need to be seen as the good boy, the nice guy, and anything that's going to tarnish that image, I mean, they, they will do whatever it takes to cover up and lie, pathological lie after lie to cover for that image. And so Watts was really in a bind trying to process. And the woman at Live Abuse Free really helped me understand this a couple of years back. Her breakdown on this. When a person who is covert narcissistic like that, who doesn't have a lot of emotional intelligence to begin with, or a lot of emotional maturity... When they get into a very complex situation in their life that requires a lot of maturity on all levels and communication and good processing and, and 
trying to face things that are going to, it was going to be shameful either way, no matter which way Watts went. You know what I'm saying? It's like, if he told his wife, he knew that this was ludicrous, that the whole public, his friends, his family, everybody that knew them would be looking at him in a different light now, not like the great guy that he wanted to remain seen as, but they would be looking at him like, what the fuck is wrong with you, man? You're running off with some skank that you've known for two weeks or three weeks or four or five weeks or whatever, and you're leaving your pregnant wife and children, and this woman loves you. She hasn't done anything wrong to you. He would have to face his fucking pathology at that point. He would have to face all these freaking issues of how he really was and how he really had been the whole time. You see? But when it comes time for the breakup, the divorce, you're not pleasing their ego as much anymore. She fell pregnant. Um, certain things happen. Changes happen. And then an obsession target comes in and they focus on that. Everything kind of comes to a head where it, where it was kind of lying dormant the whole time before. Oh, there were things that the partner could see behind closed doors. We wouldn't have known about any of it, but it was more subtle. But it's so important to understand the lead-ups to all this kind of stuff and what's kind of going on in the mind. But yeah, I just want to say that about his shame. He knew that everybody was going to be looking at him that way. And a covert narc can't bear it. Not like we can. They're like little children inside. Everybody's going to scoff at me. They're, they're going to laugh at me. I'm going to be embarrassed. But you know what? But they don't have that emotional maturity. Okay? To say, hey, this is going to be a hard thing for me to face either way. But it's what I feel and it's what I'm going to do. Even though it's going to hurt my wife or it's going to hurt my husband. It's going to hurt my break up my family. A lot of people can't just be freaking honest with themselves and others to save so much pain. That's why a lot of horrific things happen in this world out of selfishness and shame, toxic shame, rather than converting it to a healthy shame and walking on through it for the betterment of everybody involved. And fear, fear of really having to face who they are and just take one for the team. If that's really what you want to do, then you don't get to have your your way, but see, that's how selfish narcissists are. He wanted to be able to do this act to get away from his pregnant wife and children, to go off scot-free with this new obsession girl, and never lose his image. Never have to face, you're a deadbeat. You're a, you're, you really must be loony that you just upped and left her like that, or he didn't want to face any of that. But they know what they're doing is irrational. They know that they're just running on a whim. And that probably a couple months later, they won't even want her anymore. Okay, so I hope that explained that a little bit. Um, let me pick up where I left off. This is taking me longer than I wanted it to. But I feel like these things are important to reiterate, okay? Now, back on Chris Watts and discussing his level of awareness. Well, these things are complex to explain. That's what people are kind of wanting. We humans want these quick, um, one size fits all, just sum it all up with one concise, simple answer. We all, you know, we want certainty, we want reassurance. And sometimes things in this world, it just doesn't work like that. Some things absolutely defy a logic, okay? And and when a, when a man or a woman is capable of doing what Watts did, it really does send our brain into a tailspin. It defies logic. It's like, what in the hell? Okay, but I'm trying to explain the covert narcissistic personality type and how I feel like that applies to Chris Watts. In no way, shape, or form am I not holding him accountable or supporting him or excusing his actions in any way. Okay, most personality types like his with the covert narcissistic part, they don't take lives, but they do make your life a living hell. They really, really can, okay? And um, a lot of people just don't understand what they've gotten involved in. 
until they are too deep in it. And I really feel like that happened to Shanann. I don't feel like she really realized what she had gotten involved with and thought him to be a regular, mature, uh, great, charming, easygoing guy because that is what they portray. You know, they go all out to put on this big persona because they really want to be perceived as all that. But, of course, the mask starts slipping down behind closed doors and you start to see over time these quirks and insecurities and childlike ways and it's really humiliating for the dude and that just it, it contributes to his self-hatred and self-loathing and and it just it starts from there you guys and behind closed doors but a lot of times you cover for and protect a man like that and it can be a woman too it's not gender specific but especially for a man it is even harder for them to deal sometimes with having emotional and mental problems because of the stigmas and they are more ashamed and more self-loathing and things can turn out worse. You see what I'm saying? And oftentimes we are more apt to cover for a man thinking, oh, well, he'll, he'll get better if I just love him enough. I will protect his ego. I will boost his confidence. I'll tell everyone because that's the way I see him. I think Shanann was very authentically seeing Chris that way. But I could hear the straining in her voice. It takes one to know one. And I did the same thing. I could hear it in her voice. He's the best thing that ever happened to me. A lot of times we who are living with a covert narcissistic type human being, whether it's male or female, especially men, though, having struggles with their emotional, um, you know, feeling okay in their ego. And their ego is more fragile and shattered and troubled. Um, I could hear a lot of times we'll go out of the way to pump their ego for them, you know, and she was hoping he would see that and that that would help him. I know what that feels like. Okay. But there is no way in hell you can fix their fragile egos. It is something you don't understand. It is on a whole, but what they will do is blame all of that on the wife and make her look as bad as possible and constantly play the victim. And yeah, they're so ashamed of it instead of reaching out for help and trying to grow out of it and empower themselves as men, no. They oftentimes will scapegoat the wife, blame her, and um, make her look as bad as possible. And they thrive on pity. They love to get your pity. They love to play the victim role. So that's that. As far as Chris Watts', Chris Watts awareness, <clears throat> I do think that it it were it was many things that factored into his issues psychological mental emotional and spiritual and i've talked about this in other videos um i think that he had some level of psychopathy on top of all this he did not just snap because his wife he was so mean to him and he was being so emasculated and so abused and all these things absolutely not a person like that emasculates themselves. I've talked about it in other videos. They set the whole thing up. It's like a repeating pattern. But, yes, I think Chris Watts was very, very aware of what he was doing in the moment. Um, but I do think there were... It got to a point where there were... It was a combination of... Over the years, his psychological issues from childhood and his problems stuffed inside as a man being embarrassed to confront those things and face those things, just like O.J. Simpson. I think that Chris had avoided all that as long as he could, and he had severe issues that he needed to deal with. And, of course, everyone around him is going to get blamed and scapegoated. Um, of course, they don't like to take accountability for any of it. Um, but I think that, like I explained, please understand the differences between was he aware of himself and did he have self-awareness? Yes, he was aware of himself and his actions and what he was about to do to his family and he carried that out, but he was not a man who had high emotional intelligence, high emotional maturity on a healthy level. And he did not have self-awareness. Self-awareness meaning when we are aware of ourselves and we can stop ourselves and reason with ourselves and think, wait a minute, I need to get some help. I would never do anything to harm anyone. 
this is not a reasonable way to handle this. I, I, I am upset with my wife. I need to con confront. I need to communicate. I need to reach for help. Or I've fallen in love with someone else. And I need to be able to face this like a grown man who is emotionally mature. Yeah, it's going to make me feel some shame. He knew that. He knew. Okay. But see, a, a covert narcissist cannot handle that. They don't have the emotional maturity. They don't have the self-awareness. They can't handle it like that. So they don't go about, there's a damn bee after me. They don't go about handling it in a positive way. It usually meets some kind of at least hurtful ending. Usually not as tragic and devastating as what he did. But with a covert narcissist, you can best bet. The ending is not going to be a happy one. When it's time to break up or time to make changes or even fight for your own rights or whatever the case is, when they're done with you or whatever the case is, you can best bet your ass there's going to be punishment involved from them. There's going to be manipulation. There's going to be coldness, cruelty. Um, it's just the way they are. They don't have the emotional intelligence to do otherwise and to deal with that level of shame that the rest of us can process, you know, and try to work through it. Even though it feels bad to us, we have the emotional maturity to at least deal with it in a safe, healthy, and positive manner. We're not perfect. We all fuck up. We may not do it perfectly, but we don't do what Watts did. You understand what I'm saying? You would really have to understand the buildup, okay, to understand more about Chris Watts and a covert narcissistic type. Now, I don't think any of us understand the final result and the psychopathy part and taking it to that horrific extreme that he did. But I can try to help people understand the covert narcissistic part and the buildup, how it built up over time and how these people operate on a daily basis within their mind and with their lovers and partners and what is brewing in them over time. Okay. This is a slow buildup of problems that have been with them all of their life, certain wiring, certain traumatic issues and shame and things in their life that set them up for certain thinking patterns that they've never healed or had therapy for or dealt with. Okay. And sooner or later it catches up. Okay. But it's not a thing where he just snapped and decided, Oh my God, I am so sick of my wife. She has mistreated me. I can't take any more of her. She, it, and it is so sad and so sick and so wrong for the partner to get the blame like that for the uh, victim to get the blame like that. Okay. Because a bait and switch has happened. And so many people don't know this and won't know this because they've never been around this type of personality. Okay. But it is a case where he did snap, but he did not just snap all of a sudden because of his wife, because of anything that she did. And that is what people need to understand. You cannot make someone a murderer, no matter what you do, okay? No matter what is going on, you can't make someone that deranged and to that level, okay? Unless it is dire emergency, self-defense type of thing, okay? Just like with O.J. Simpson, these things were in his brain wiring to be that kind of person, to think on that kind of level if he had to at all costs to get what he wanted to soothe his ego and to soothe his shame that he didn't want to carry. A lot of times this has to do with toxic shame. I've talked about that in um, reference to the show Baby Reindeer in one of my other videos on the channel. Toxic shame, okay? Chris Watts as well. They want to avoid shame at all costs. But yet they're always carrying an enormous amount of toxic shame. They fear healthy shame. Like we can go through healthy shame enough to get better and face our problems. They can't. And they end up doing awful things trying to hide from shame. Trying to avoid being shamed. Like OJ didn't want Nicole to go on with life without him and parade around with other men. And that's a narcissist. They want to control everything you do. And by God, if you, they're not going to be able to control you, nobody else is going to be able to have you or you're not going to be able to go on with life. Um, most of the time they don't take lives. They just make your life a living hell after the breakup and they try to punish you and do all kinds of the other things to hurt you and throw people in your face and all that. 
But same thing with Watts, you know. In some way, all of this had built over the years. And then Nicole Kessinger comes into the picture. And again, you would have to know, I've got a lot of other videos about it and more I intend to get up. You would have to know that personality type to understand what he was doing. Here comes Nicole Kessinger. And it's a new extra level of attention. Um, this is triggering to him. He's already had Shanann for years in the role of bad mommy. Um, I've talked about this in other videos, how they set you up and put you in control, but yet resent you for it. So you would just really have to know a lot of these things to completely understand. But for his level of emotional immaturity and his low EQ, his low emotional intelligence, and the way that their their mind is so childlike when dealing with the most important things in the world to me, you know, I don't care how I, I if you have a PhD, I don't care what kind of career you have, I don't care how skilled you are, I don't care. If you don't have EQ, you don't have emotional intelligence, you're fucked. It, it's really hard to get by in this world and have relationships and deal with people. And, you know, when all of this happened... I believe that, yes, other than probably some psychopathy, to have the audacity and the ability to carry something like that out and it not just be devastating to him, like, like, sure. But I think on some levels there was, yes, a certain amount of lack of awareness, a certain amount of arrested development. You get what I'm saying? Even brain damage. Going through certain types of childhood trauma, ridicule, shame, mixed sometimes with pers uh, uh, learning disabilities, mixed with, um, I've talked about this before, I think something happened to him that was very traumatic, whether it was a babysitter or a, a something at school or whether it was inside the home. And then the issues with the mother. I don't think she was quite as mothering as, you know, I think there were some issues in that background of Watts. All of this, mix it together, okay? And it can cause brain damage. Okay, I grew up in childhood abuse. I know what I'm talking about. I grew up in horrific abuse. Mental, physical, emotional, sexual, manipulation, beatings, you name it. And mother and father, different ways and different narcissistic personalities and disorders. And I have had to have years of therapy. I've had to be in therapy pretty much all of my life. And so I know what it can do to the brain. I know how it can damage the brain and warp the brain. And I know how many years that I carried bad thinking patterns. And yes, well into my 20s. Well, well into my 20s. Some of them almost 30. It took work. So with Chris Watts not getting that kind of work and therapy, and often a lot of times, especially men don't. More and more of them are now, and that's great. But you get what I'm saying. A lot of times, especially dudes, they don't want to confront any of that. They don't even want to think about it. And they're... A lot of people are not even relating their problems. They can't see the patterns. They can't see where it's stemming from. And their freaking wife gets the blame. Their wife gets scapegoated. And it's not fair. And it's not right. Okay. Now don't get me wrong. I know there's a lot of men out there who are also being mistreated, disrespected, hurt, and abused by women. Yes. There are some just as many narcissist, pathologically narcissistic women out there that have these same types of damages and whatnot. But in the Watts case, I hope, I hope this helps a little bit. I mean, granted, we all agree. Something like this is just beyond, way beyond our levels of understanding for how someone could do such a thing. But again, I hope this helps you a little bit more to understand certain aspects of it. the narcissistic personality, the differences, the pathologically narcissistic personality. And so many people have misconceptions about it. And so many people are just looking at the good old classic narcissist who just kind of parades around and they're looking at Shanann, the wife in this case, as, she, as though she were, was the problem and that she caused this man to snap. And that's just not so. Just like in my relationship, it wasn't so. I didn't cause him to do anything. But luckily, I had witnesses. I had people that knew for sure his issues. 
but covert narcissists are very, very good about keeping all that hidden. They are so self-conscious and they are the most self-conscious of all the narcissistic types. And they need your approval so badly and they will go overboard to people please, even making you believe they're happy to do it and then hate you for it. Literally hate you for it, resent you, call people up and say, I can't believe she makes me do this. And you just literally gave them options. Babe, it's totally up to you. I'm telling you, so many cases, people unfairly get blamed and scapegoated and made into the problem when they were not ever part of the problem. The problem is in the covert narcissistic brain. It is always in there beating down on them. You don't have to do anything to them. They are so self-conscious and so hypersensitive. But yes, in the end, I do believe Chris Watts, with his arrested development, his low emotional intelligence and lack of emotional maturity at all, um, and knowing the covert narcissistic brain, that's how they think, like a little boy. He wanted to run with what was exciting his ego in the moment. What was, you know, because by this time the wife is exhausted. The wife of a covert narcissist is exhausted. It's like having another child. Male or female, it can happen to either one, but you get what I'm saying. And pregnant. I've experienced this in my own life with another or the covert narcissistic type, who, sure, because the wife was pregnant, that bores them. Wife's pregnant, sick, and because the wife is not able to meet their needs, their demands, their ego, they have no empathy whatsoever for you being pregnant, for you being sick. No, they're bored and they want to go out and cheat. They need that ego stroked. I need attention. Very much like that. Same with Chris Watts. And here comes this other type of woman who actually... Chris Watts would have fallen all over himself if a garbage truck gave him attention. That's how the covert narcissistic mind is. They're so desperate for it. It's nothing you did. It's nothing his wife did to him. It is nothing she did or didn't do. It is in their brain. I'm telling you. So here comes this other thing, chick... And I've got a lot of thoughts on Nicole Kessinger and Chris Watson, the covert narcissist and all this shit. I'm going to get it up in another video, but he handled it the way he handled it, which is really hard for us to fucking understand. But typically they won't go that far. But yes, it's very much like that. They will just overnight. He decided all that in five weeks. In five weeks. That's how they are. That's how the covert narc is. Because... They aren't ever as really deeply attached to you the whole time they're married to you. They aren't really deeply connecting to people in a healthy way. So when something else comes along and boosts up their ego, they really can just decide just like that. I want that. I'm, I, 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 I'm going to be obsessed with that. And they will be become obsessed sometimes with just a crackhead on the street. Some random stranger and literally put their whole family in danger put their their children in danger their wife their husband they don't give a fuck and that's their ego they're chasing and you better not get in the way of it and when he decided that when that immature shit kicked off in his brain his wife became the enemy not anything he could see as human pregnant mother of his children now, how the, ch how the children, that's a whole different, I, I just can't even, why he went on to do that part. I, I, but you, you're following me here, how the covert narc thinks. Mine did me this way too. Okay, but I still have my life. He wasn't typically violent to me, but in the very end of our relationship, I loved this man. He had cancer. He had alcoholism. He had so many things going on, and I was so devoted to him. But in the end of our relationship, I was exhausted, and I had to put my foot down. I just couldn't keep up anymore. But I was so angry 
that he was just going to do that little boy shit that covert narcissistic little boy immature shit of oh okay well if i can't get what i want from you anymore and you're too exhausted you're having heart palpitations you're a human okay then that's how they treat you okay well i'll just go become obsessed with this old thing girl over here and i was so angry with him for that and when i asserted how hurtful that was to me naturally a woman's gonna do that just like shenan did he put his hands around my throat at exactly i know it the the it, ga it gave me chills just thinking about it because of what had happened in the watts case and this happened to me in 2022 when i got angry about his new whatever what woman wouldn't he grabbed me by the fucking throat and started threatening to hit me. And it was the first time he had ever done anything like that. Which my guy had gone out and run off and started doing meth and dope and drugs. And I can't say that Chris Watts wasn't. You know? But I'm just trying to give you guys some insight into this covert narcissistic personality. And I knew at that point, okay, I gotta let this go. I gotta let this go you know and my guy would never carry it as far as watts i still love him to this day he's passed away last year he loved his children he didn't bring any harm to his children and had never put his hands on me in our relationship okay but sometimes people with issues like that and a covert narcissistic personality and all kinds of other stuff going on it gets to a snapping point in their mind and the dangerous time, okay, is when the breakup's about to happen. When they are getting ready to discard you because they could no longer control you or they could no longer find use for you and you, you aren't boosting their ego properly anymore and they have already set their sights on the new target, the new obsession to, to fulfill their ego because that's really all it's ever about for a covert narcissist, okay? Now, with my guy and I, I really wanted to believe in deeper love. And I think there were times that we really did have a very deep connection. But he was also very, very damaged, okay? And they can only love you as much as they have worked on these issues. And, you know, you know what I'm saying? And so, I do very much feel like this has gotten a lot longer than I intended for it to be. But I really hope some valid points have come out. And I hope that this can help some people to understand better. Watts decided, just like my partner, oh, okay. But he never would have done that had some girl not come along. See, they have to be sure that they have something else to run to. They have to have already fixated their brain on a new obsession. That's what triggers them, their narcissist, their pathological narcissism to start going off the charts and get brave enough other than that they really never want to let you go they want to cling on to you and attach to you and you know get their ego fed off you and use you and whatever their needs are make you into a mommy figure or most of them do and it really embarrasses them they're very self-conscious about that um but see the general public doesn't know any of this shit they don't know a damn thing they just don't. They could never know this. And, you know, a lot of times the wives don't tell it till it's too late. Because they're, they're, they're living in it. They're trying to figure it out. They don't know what the fuck, you know? It's like, but yeah, I think that he um, found his new object of obsession. And that set everything in motion. Now, am I fully blaming this on Nicole? No. Am I? No. Chris Watts is always always accountable and fully responsible for everything he did for all of his actions because he could have at any time broken that obsession he could have at any time said you know what i don't want to be this hopeless compulsive weak easily influenced easily manipulated narcissist anymore who puts my own self in a position bad position or puts women over me, puts them in control, never communicates with them properly, and I want to seek help. And I don't want to cheat on my wife. I don't want to do any of these crazy ass things. I need to get some help first. Or, hey, I want to go with this new girl. And, you know, at any time he could have put a stop 
to what was going on. So yes, he was aware. But I'm also explaining to you the level of awareness he didn't have. There are many different types of awareness. People need to understand that too. So for these questions of was he aware? Was he stupid? Was he... It's not that cut and dry. It is deep, complex, layered, nuanced, lots to it. There are certain levels of awareness he just did not have that a normal, healthy, thinking human man would have. Okay? Narcissists just don't have it sometimes, On, depending on what level of pathological narcissism they're on and what other disorders are mixed in with it. Sociopathy, psychopathy, trauma in the childhood, all kinds, you know, it just depends on the person. But yeah, he definitely, the obsession kicked off, was triggered by getting attention from this new person, and that's when it starts with them, because they're no longer, you know, and a lot of times it's because they're no longer able to control you, or you're not giving them as much of an ego boost as you used to. In my case, it was, I was having to put my foot down, I was tired, I was exhausted, I was getting sick, and that's when mine happened. With the Watts case, Shanann was pregnant. Shanann was pregnant, she was tired, she was probably getting sick a lot, she couldn't boost his ego as much as she used to, they've been married eight years, and here comes the new obsession, the new trigger point. Nicole. But is Nicole responsible fully? No, Chris is. But Nicole is responsible for her damn part, and I will get into that in another video, because she knew things as well. Okay? Now, I'll get into my thoughts on her role in it later. But, and Chris and Nicole fed off of each other's toxicity. Absolutely. And that's when I think a spiritual component is involved. Absolutely. You guys have heard me talk about dark entity attachments and dark thought forms and those types of energetic vortexes that come through other people. And when you're in a state like that, like Chris was, all that toxic shame and secrets and uh, uh, emotional immaturity and not getting any positive guidance about it, not getting any teaching, any good input, any help, refusing to do that. Even when Shanann gave him a book, it went in the trash. Okay, so I think all of this, yes, came to a head. And he wanted to follow that new obsession. You don't understand how important that is for a, nar for a, for a covert narcissist especially. They feel so weak inside and anything that can make them feel powerful again and there's so much to explain about that so yeah he was fully aware of doing that fully aware of doing it absolutely and he carried it out because that was his lame brain level of reasoning again it's both at once he was aware that he was making that choice he was aware of what he was carrying out and why, but at the same time, he did not have a healthy, normal level of self-awareness to tell him, wait a minute, this is not how I handle things. He was literally thinking that was the right thing to do for the lame brain, slow, emotional maturity level he was on that's the basic deal okay he was literally thinking and with that high narcissism thinking i can get away with it there's no problem with this you know i want what i want i can get away with it too all i gotta do is just do this this and this and just dump this and dump them out and just go right on and yeah it, their brain gets really out there okay and um it's just sad. But yeah, it's triggering to me too because I've been through similar things, but nothing as horrific as that. I mean, but yeah, that was about his ego. So, but you, you, you understand now how tricky it can be explaining the awareness part. What was, what was up with that dude's brain? Like, whoa, whoa, what? Of course, I am not him. I didn't know him personally. I didn't follow him around 24 seven. I get that, but I'm just telling you what I feel off of it. Okay. And what I see in it and what I've lived with very very similar things okay not the same but similar aspects that I can I've been through and I can compare and learn from and share with you and so yeah he
all of those things came to a head in that man's life. And when a covert narc decides to do that, they, they really do. It, it was a premeditated act with Chris that he thought up and carried out. He planned and carried out. But at the same time, there's a certain switch within that began to happen five weeks earlier where they really do go cold with you just like that. It will seem like it's overnight, but, you know, within five weeks, all this was said and done. Can you believe that? So just in knowing that girl five weeks, that's how they are. Yeah, that's how mine was, too. When that switch goes off in their brain, it goes off. And they begin to treat you as if they never knew you. As if you were never the woman that loved and adored and cooked and cleaned and bathed them and held their hand at, at appointments and sicknesses. And, you know, a lot of women I know who have been with covert narcs are very devoted women, whether they seem like that attitude or not. And I know for a fact who I was to my man, and you can ask anybody in his family who I was for him and how much I loved and cared for him. But, you know, a lot of times family don't know shit either. They don't see everything goes on behind closed doors. But, yeah. Um, yeah, there was this buildup. I think that it had been brewing in him for years. You know, and something comes along and triggers this off. And they, when they set their sights on that thing, whatever it is, they will risk it everything for it. Now, Chris Watts took it to a horrific extreme. Normal, Normally, they don't go that extreme, but they do go extreme and they risk their wives, their children, their husbands, who's ever at home. They go out and they get these weird strangers involved and they connect to people because they're not really connecting. They don't have emotional depth like we do. Because they're not really connecting, they go out and connect to people overnight. They are the type that are your best friend overnight. I just love you, love you, love you. You see the pattern there? He didn't even know that fucking girl and was willing to do what he did. And yes, covert narcissists are that extreme. Anything to get, that's how fucking empty they are inside, you see. And yeah, a lot of times they will go out and get these complete wacko weirdo strangers involved anyone that gives them some kind of extra attention and that's putting their whole family at risk now they got some weird girl involved who oftentimes wants to look you up because you're the main woman honey i've had it happen i had a girl doing me the same way that was with mine and he still loved me still obsessively thought about me and I loved him and obsessively thought about him but you know I had to put my foot down because these are the things that were going on behind closed doors they were toxic and unmanageable and hurtful and so but he still thought about me still texted me still looked at my pictures still love you know we still had that going on for some time but the person he did exactly what Watts did he went out and in order to protect himself from processing any deeper emotion from me he couldn't do that and he ran out and you know just whatever the next little skanky thing was that would give him some attention or that he could get up under his control usually when a covert narc does it it's someone who is less powerful than you someone who has oftentimes less intelligence than you someone who doesn't know them and can glorify them and you know, be in the honeymoon phase of idolizing or admiring them and hasn't had to live with them for years like you have. Um, and so, yeah, all this kicks off in that dude. And they, they when, once that click kicks off in their brain, it goes very extreme and it does seem like just overnight. They will act like they don't know you. They don't care about you. They never knew you. Nothing you ever did for them meant a thing they will gaslight they will call you horrible names they will pretend that you know which my person's family knew better but poor Shanann I don't believe for a second absolutely not I think Chris's entire family was toxic and my person parts certain ones of his family were toxic too 
and um, but most of them were pretty pretty good people, and they knew they knew. But my person's problems were more obvious than Chris Watts' problems. He kept his very hidden. Okay, but yes, when they switch over in the brain, and they get this new obsession with somebody outside the situation, they'll put the whole damn family at risk. And now their new obsession person that they barely know, they want to know the wife. They want to start stalking your Facebook, your life. And now you got an energy of, of an extra person out there hating you that you don't even know, really. You know, when all this first kicks off, your wife or your husband being narcissistic like that and having these ways has now out there got another person they barely know. OK, all for their own damn ego, all for I'm telling you. And now they're putting you at risk. Some strange-ass person is now stalking your social media and wants to know who you are and hating on you and wanting to take your husband away or, or your wife away. It's crazy. It's dangerous. And you may have children involved. They do not care. And they want to talk like, I love my kids. Uh-uh. These are emotionally immature, low emotional t intelligence people who, again, don't have that type of self-awareness to stop themselves. They're thinking on a very immature teenage or younger level when it comes to stuff like that. And they will not stop until that ego is pleased. And they make a shit. I love my kids. And if you love your kids, you stop yourself. You control yourself. Have some self-control. You deal with those compulsions. You become aware of those compulsions. And you reach out and you get professional help. Or you start working on yourself, okay? You don't just keep doing it and keep going out and doing something that would put your children, ultimately could put your wife and children in danger of a strange stalker or doing God knows what to them or driving you to do God knows what. You see what I'm saying? You stop yourself from that and you get your ego boosted another way, buddy or ma'am. <laughs> just saying. Go to the therapist. Get your ego boosted the right way boost your own ego learn to have your own sense of self and your own sense of identity and love for yourself and strength and purpose within yourself rather than having to go out here and cheat and thinking that chasing girls or dudes or whatever toxic shit is going to get you because see here's the thing it never work it never helps nothing ever fills their ego enough never and ultimately They'll go do all that, and then within a few weeks to a few months, wish they could come back home. Like, oh my God, what have I done? Like a temporary possession, or they do take it that far. And this brain state comes over them where it is like mental illness. All these things are forms of mental illness. And... A lot of these types of people who are emotionally dysregulated or personality disordered, they have very poor impulse control. Be aware of that. There are times in their life, but it's tricky. It may not be all the time. They may be able to control it a lot of times, but there may be certain triggers or certain times where they have no impulse control and they cannot stop themselves. They're going to do it or die, no matter the consequences. Are they accountable? Yes, they are. Are they aware that they're about to go through with it? Yes, they are. But it is such a powerful brain state, and there's so much damage and corruption there. So I'm trying to kind of give you some insight into what I have been through, witnessed, observed, I've seen. I have four brothers with different forms of mental illness, personality disorders, both my parents. I've had numerous best friends, close friends, partners, I've seen a lot of this stuff, you know, and I've been to the depths with them talking and observing and listening and witnessing what they go through and how they act it out. Okay. And so, yeah. So hopefully that opens perspective just a little bit. And that's what I'm feeling about the whole thing. Hell yeah, that man was aware of what he was doing. Absolutely. Okay. But there's a lot that factors into a mind like that. And he just thought, you know. I'm, he, he didn't consciously think, I'm going to scapegoat Shanann. I know that I am wrong, but no. 
but he scapegoated his wife, transferred and projected all that rage and anger and blame onto her. She instantly became the enemy when he found that new obsession uh, that he'd only known for a couple weeks. That's how they are. Some of them will later on, after they cause all hell and break up their whole family, within a few weeks, they won't even want that, that, that extra person anymore. They won't even want that obsession anymore. Because, and they will want to come back home. Because it's very hard for them to find, when they have a true woman or a true man in their life, when they have genuine, true, devoted high frequency high value woman or man in their life it's hard to go out and replace that shit with just any old person and see they don't know that they got the big head they think they can and oftentimes they go out and they're sadly disappointed i feel like chris and nicole after they had been together a few weeks if had they got to move in together i feel like within a few weeks to a few months it would have been ob chris would have realized what is this thing that I did this for or you know um, they would have done each other the exact same way the exact same issues he had with Shanann would have started with Nicole he would have started scapegoating, blaming her um, finding fault with her, those issues don't go away just because you replace the woman, you ding ding but that is, they don't get it, you know what I'm saying so, okay, that's what I have to say about that. You know, I, I may review this and have some extra things to add in. By no means is this like 100% explanation or, you know, but it's telling you what people of this personality type can act like and what they can think like and kind of what I've seen in my life and what I feel off this case. And I feel like it was a horrific, tragic, selfish thing. And, um, yeah, he just thought that that's what I want. That's what I'm going to do. And do whatever it takes to keep feeding this ego and get what I want. And why the children, though? I mean, why any of them? But, but the children, I mean, it just... Because he wanted to run. That's how teenage they are. That's how warped, delusional, deranged, and I'm telling you, brain damaged, not well developed in the emotional maturity area, emotional intelligence area. He wanted to skate off scot-free like a teenager with this new chick who didn't have kids. He didn't want any of those responsibilities, anything to even, they are very weird like that. They, they have trouble with balance, of course, with nuance, with um, balancing complex concepts like, okay, I can still love my wife and children and ask for a divorce and have feelings for this new person and have to take care of two things. It was just too much, okay? Just when my dude was like that, like if I started talking to him about really complex details or he had to process too much at once he would just go to shambles just 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 and act out or get drunk or go out and do something careless and outrageous and get arrested or um fucking go flirt with girls on the internet or um just freak out get angry you know he wanted everything to be a very narrow rigid simple um straight like just the way they want it just the way they're a weird lot the covert narcissistic types but i'm going to end this saying again my person was very different from chris watts okay and i loved him very deeply and he had a lot of great characteristics as a man on this earth things went really bad for him in his life after 20 years of his own marriage and children lifelong alcoholism and trauma he lost a child suddenly and things went very, very bad for him. He had a lot of problems, a lot of medical issues. Did not excuse his treatment of women or the ways in which he manipulated and psychologically abused and allowed alcohol to destroy him. And therefore, that came out on me a lot because of his own self-abuse. Didn't excuse the things he did to me at all. But it gave me a lot of insight that I can give to you.
did I still care for and love that man? I did till the day he left this earth. And I don't regret loving him. I don't regret the good times. But all in all, I had to take action. And it could have, because of drugs, alcohol, unresolved trauma, things he was getting himself into, it could have led up to something really horrific if I had continued to participate. Now, do I think he would have ever taken my life? No. Or anyone else's? No. And did he love his children? Absolutely did. But he just couldn't stay well enough. He was consumed with his problems and his drinking, and he couldn't stay well enough for any of us. That was a him problem. And we couldn't save him, you know? But I can still tell you guys about the similar characteristics and what I know about certain personality types, okay? Watts, on the other hand, was a whole different fucking dude. And, in fact, my partner knew about the Watts case, and he couldn't stand that dude. Because my partner loved children. He loved babies. And he would never do anything like that. So my partner actually had some empathy. That's another thing you people need to understand. A lot of people don't understand empathy is on a spectrum. I think my partner had more empathy, even though he had high pathological narcissistic tendencies and defense mechanisms that was due to a lot of trauma and drinking automatically makes narcissism but he also had a certain amount of empathy and i think he had more empathy for children than he ever did for his adult female partners when it came to adult relationships that is where he struggled didn't have as much empathy as i wished he would have had for me and it got pretty ugly and pretty cold sometimes when i really needed you know, when you would want someone to have empathy for you, like when I was sick, or there were times he did try, but he just, that didn't come naturally to him because of his abuse, because of the horrific things that happened in his past, because of his wiring, because of a lot of certain things. I didn't excuse it, absolutely not. But what I'm saying is, you just never know. And if you stay in a situation and you keep agging it on, if you're already seeing red flags, anything could happen. It just You just really never know. But I don't think Shanann, I think she was seeing red flags all along, but she didn't know they were red flags. That happens a lot. That's why it's important to share. I don't think, I think she was so blinded by her love for him as I was blinded by my love for my partner. And I did put up with a lot for a long time, but I finally had to put my foot down. But I don't think Shanann knew because it wasn't physical abuse. It wasn't overt abuse. It was very subtle, sick, psychological types of abuse. And a lot of times just by a person being weird and off balance and having psychological problems and the way they go about their day and interacting with you, a lot of times that's a form of abuse to you. Just by the way they, they do things and and. It, it starts to turn into uh, torment to you. And psychological abuse is very hard to get people to understand because it's so subtle. It's so twisted and secretive and nobody really sees it. But after a while, it destroys people. Okay? And it leads up to a lot of rage and a lot of fear and a lot of things. Okay? So... All right, guys, I may talk more about this in a part two, but I hope I conveyed something that, you know, somebody can understand. And um, if you got something out of this video, hit like, hit share, please. That helps my channel to grow. And if you're brand new to watching my videos, hit subscribe, stick around, and um, I'll be glad to have you. Thanks for watching.